What's up, YouTube? All right, man. It's on. Oh, wait till you guys see this. It's not Here it comes. All right, you what's ready? up, YouTube? Boom. All right, dude. Time to save some fish today. Oh, yeah. Right, like, we're going to save the lives of many, many, many fish. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you guys are going to want to do this. All right. Stop QT shaming. All right, so here's the deal. <laughs> I wanted to do this, and, and, and it's evolving because I'm doing it at home, right? Yeah. Every great video we do, I think, comes from the fact of stuff that we tried here, and they're like, you know what we need to share, share in the world, and this is it. This is it. All right, so, uh, is yeah. QT possible? So today, real? yes, you're gonna find out, is QT, or quarantining your fish, a real thing? Is it fake? Is it garbage? Should you shame everybody that doesn't do it? Because there's a lot of QT shaming going around. Like, you didn't do it, shame on you. And we've got 10 levels of QT that we uh, both agree on. And at the end, you're uh, like really a expectation of, uh, I think how you could 80% of people could do this and get 80% of the benefit. Yeah, out of those 10, which ones are actually realistic that mm. most of us could do? Yeah. And do we have a special? Uh, we do. On your phone. Yeah. All right, so at the end, if you are part of uh, our subscription base, you'll get a little note pops up hey. and uh, well, you can save on something. Those of you who stayed to the end on the last two got a little surprise. Yeah. I'm just All saying. Right. All right, here we go. Uh, all right, so. Why would you quarantine a fish to begin with? And like, uh, let's just be honest, like expose yourself here. Mm. Have you ever quarantined a fish? Tell us a little yes or no in, in the comments here. Yeah, because ahead. like, it's actually helpful for everybody to see whether or not people really do this. And if you do do it, like share, like was this a medicated 2QT? You bought it that way, uh, you know, or yeah. I never, I've never done it, my fish are just fine, yeah. whatever it is, share that. Uh, it's really helpful for other people to see it and uh, take some risks. And there's yeah. different levels of, you know, your QT. So throw in what you did for, if you decide, if you did the QT, what did you do for the QT? Throw it in there as quick as possible. We'll read some of those at the end too. All right, so why would you QT a fish? The first one is disease is way more prevalent than you think. It's, it's absolutely true. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, becoming more prevalent. I don't know if it's becoming more prevalent, but I definitely see uh, a lot of tanks that I come in contact with. You know, my mom's tank, for example, just lost mo a majority of her fish. Oh, really? I didn't hear uh, Because, you know, one bad, one bad apple got into the bunch. Uh, uh, that's because she's not wasn't consulting me when she was buying them, so she bought a uh, soul hall tank that Ooh. was not very healthy and just kind of wiped out most of her tanks. But that uh, is a common thing, guaranteed. I did that same exact thing on my 125. I, all my fish were doing great. I was under a pretty good ick management control, and the next thing I know, I uh, I saw this really cool clown tank. I had to have him put him in the tank, wipe out, Pff, done. Mm -hmm. Uh, it actually happened in the 160, like the first batch of fish we put in oh, there. Oh, that's right. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. five years ago. <laughs> yeah. All right. So but it, disease is prevalent. Yeah, disease is way more prevalent. And we're not just talking about ick or velvet or uranema or, uh, mm. uh, you know, flukes and parasites and, you know, parasitic isopods and all kinds of crazy stuff that can be in your fish. Yeah. You know, it's like all kinds of stuff is way more prevalent. And it's because they all kind of like go through this one little sick hotel. You know, oh, uh, yeah. you know, they're all going through these One or same three, batches yeah. of water that share and are never fully cleaned. Mm. You know, so like the the hotel they stay in, nobody ever changes the sheets. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and it's not One totally day you'll true. get bed bugs. You yeah. know, a lot of them are you know heavily medicated and whatever, but a lot of this stuff just kind of exists in there, and they're exposed to it constantly. And mm. there's, and it's not to like. You know, shame on that experience because it might be just part of the reality of right. you know, bringing fish in. But it is more to acknowledge its existence. Mm -hmm. If this is true, how can we do better? Mm. And if you acknowledge that all the fish come into the LA wholesalers, they all go to a fish store, they all go to an online store, they're all kind of housed together. Uh, what do we do in that environment where all of the fish are exposed to each other and there's definitely illness in there and it just kind of like perpetuates yeah. because you're never going to be able to eradicate it all. It's an interesting thought that uh, when you say, when we said talk about all of these fish being brought into the same source, meaning that uh, uh, in the wild, these diseases are naturally occurring. And that means they, you know, they exist out there, but there's, I mean, there's, pop, there's probably populations and death that you don't see in the ocean that happens from the various diseases. So some, the ocean's natural way of management 
Mm. It does. It's not eradicate. The, the, there is no eradication in the ocean. This stuff just exists. Well, part of it is just dilution. So can, right? yeah, exactly. Like so, like when you know, like some of these parasites, you know, uh, like natural life cycle is to, you know, eat on the fish, go land in the sand, replicate itself into uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of itself. Yeah. Go back into the water, find new fish. But happening, uh, happening in a big, giant body of water, not a 125-gallon box. Yeah, not in a 125-gallon box, yeah. but in a uh, unfathomable yeah. amount of water in a natural yeah. reef. Yeah. So, like, there's always going to be a parasite that gets there, but not, like, millions of them that overwhelm the fish. Yeah, concentrated in our boxes means more likely right. to spread. So, uh, the other why I do this is, oh, my tank's just fine. Until it's not. Yeah, mm. it happened here. So we had uh, some uh, Achilles tangs and uh, other things that were in a big, huge frag system. Like it used to be like literally right there. Yeah. Uh, and everybody was doing super awesome. Looks great. Until the uh, power uh, went out and- Trigger an event. Uh, the water got cold and it was only cold for like a day or so, but it triggered a stress event where the Achilles mm. actually broke out an ick and then wiped out everybody else because it ended up being the like uh, feeding source, yeah. you know, to replicate all mm. over the place. So yeah, I mean, it's good until you have one event in your tank that stresses everything out, and then maybe it's not. Which good. is specifically if you have ick magnets. And well. we know that those of those stressful events are inevitable. Uh, your heaters will fail. Your gear will fail. Your power heads will fail. The power in your house will fail. All of these can uh, be a stress trigger. Even changes in lighting, uh, the slightest thing, or you know, flow, uh, power head goes out. Now I've lost flow in the other half of my tank. Stressful event. So this is one of the important things, I think, is because you see a lot of people like uh, in forums and stuff, and they're like, oh, what do you mean? I've never had this problem. My power's never gone out. I've never had a power head break or yeah. whatever. Yeah, okay. So, but make sure that when you're thinking about that, you know, mentality is that when you're sharing that information, it's kind of like saying, don't worry about this because it never happened to me. Yeah. If you think about it instead of how likely is it inside of five years I'm going to have a prolonged power outage of a day, <laughs> how long, how likely it is that a couple of my power outages are going to mm -hmm. break or get jammed and be done for a couple of days, mm. how likely is it my heater is going to break inside of five years and I won't know at the moment it <laughs> happened, I mean these things like really pile up and you're like, oh well this stuff starts, it's, it's like inevitable. A, it's like encouraging somebody to smoke because for you've smoked for decades and nothing's. I've never had emphysema. Yeah, I never it's died. good for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, okay. Cost of fish. Well, so yeah, cost of fish is definitely one of yeah. them as well. Like so, you know, in, in my tank, I spent a lot of money on these fish. Uh, I'm starting to get into like rarer, rarer mm -hmm. fish, just like as a progression of the hobby, and because, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Elliot is like constantly enticing me with them. Uh, <laughs> like, would you like one of these? I'm like, no, no, no. It's, yes. like, it's too expensive, man. Yeah. They're like, I, yes, I do. I don't know. Yeah, so but when they start, the fish started to get expensive, mm. uh, well, you put more effort into protecting them as well. And lastly, man, they are your pets. So ignorance is bliss, but like once you know all the things we just talked about, you know, and uh, once you've experienced them there, mm. like your mom just did, yeah. certainly you know uh, and now maybe do something about it. So let's talk about the 10 different ways that you could quarantine. And I really think of this as a scale of one to 10, like, like the best yeah, possible way. Uh, there's the low end of not really doing anything to the high end of doing everything and everything in between, so. I mean, I can't believe I'm gonna pick on your mom right now. <laughs> but your what, mom is number one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I, well, I can't say that I didn't encourage her to, but. Um, also, we, we, uh, when your options are limited. But number one, the level of QT or level one of QT is just dump and pray because I'm not even sure what I'm looking for. I, okay. I am not, when I first entered the hobby, I was not trained or knew what Ick looked like, Velvet looked like, Brucanella looked like, uh, any types of isopods or parasitic worms or whatever. I have no idea what that stuff looks like until my fish are dead. And then I'm wondering, like, wow, how did he die? I have no idea. Okay. I mean, raise your hand right now if you think you could identify the difference between ick and uh, 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 velvet. Uh, could you identify the, what uh, brook is uh, rapidly enough to treat it? Mm. Could you uh, know whether or not your your fish has flukes in it? You know, like I, all these things, man. Like, 
how would you know all of these things? Yeah. Uh, would you know right now? And you, many of you are probably like, I've been doing this for many, many years and probably not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, well, I'll tell you a couple of them today, uh, how you would identify it. Actually, I, I read once uh, that the difference between ick uh, and uh, velvet is basically if you can see it, uh, like uh, if you can count the amount of spots, it's ick. Hmm. If you can't count the amount of spots, velvet. it's velvet. Huh. Because it's rap uh, it's, it it's just happens so fast. So fast. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, and they look very similar. It's like a white little dusting uh, on the mm. fish. Uh, uh, there's probably some other ways some people will say, but like that's a pretty good reference. Uh, if I can count the amount of little white spots on there, it's ick. If I can't, it's velvet. Only somebody can make a book. All right. So anyway, uh, dump and pray, man. Everybody I, in Everybody's the audience, done it. Uh, like 99% of you have done this. Yes. You didn't know. You went to the fish store, said, I want that one. And I uh, float it and I dump it. Yeah. All right. Next one. This is the evolution. Observation before buying. So you've probably been burned, um, mm -hmm. and, or you've been told mm -hmm. s at least some kind of preventative, and now you're at the stage of, all right, before I buy a fish, I'm going to watch it, and this is probably related to like at your LFS, uh, where you go, you see your fish, and you just kind of watch it in there, you ask the questions to your LFS, you know, of what its behavior is like, is it eating, does it show signs of anything, maybe they hold it for you, and you just come check on it every once in a while, or the LFS uh, watches it, and then eventually you buy the thing, okay, and then dump and pray. Because I love puppy analogies. <laughs> if you went to go buy a puppy from somebody and it wouldn't eat, come back later, man. Yeah. Uh, this uh. is bad news, right? <laughs> uh, so the, the food one is probably one yep. of the easiest ways the average person could identify whether or not a fish if is it's sick. Healthy, it's yeah, good, if it's yeah. eating, the chances go way up, it's healthier. If it's not yeah. eating, it goes way down. Right. And then you go into looking for all the little signs of illness, and you'll have to like go do research on this one. But yep. like, it, I mean, physically, just really pay attention, man. Look for abnormalities, and if you see one, it uh, goes up, you know, skyrockets the chances <laughs> it's unhealthy. All right, next one is your LFS, your local fish store, or your favorite online shop does the quarantine for you. Mm. Right, so this is now uh, what we'll venture into is like uh, legit methods of quarantine, but it really only kind of means what it means, uh, which is different everywhere. So let's talk about the fish store quarantine a little bit. Well, some say, um, I, I remember, you know, I think back to uh, Saltwater Empire, mm -hmm. and in his back room there was, you know, the wall of tanks, and that, those were, you know, copper treated tanks. And mm -hmm. so at a minimum, who I don't know what the rest of his procedures were, but at a minimum, the new fish would arrive. They would go in those holding systems in the copper medicated tanks. So to some degree, they were getting like that uh, preventative treatment outside of that. You know, is that a level of QT? Yeah, absolutely. There's a, a medication involved. Uh, is it the full spectrum of QT? Probably not. But they've done something that you're not willing to do at your home. I, I mean, I, I hate to say this too, but I know how you can know whether or not it's quarantined or not proper. Hmm. It costs more. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, price, it's just like, price is a determining factor. Yeah, because like what they've done now with, with uh, you know, properly quarantined. So there's different versions of quarantine, both online and in a fish store. Yep. Uh, you have to ask them and you also have to trust them that these are people. So if they've earned your trust in other ways, they probably they are giving you this accurate. If you question their trust because of the way they've treated you in the past, mm -hmm. they probably aren't. Yeah. So you know, take that to your store. But uh, you know, sometimes it's just quarantined in the they quarantined, they isolated the fish and uh, watched them for observation. You know, a week yeah. or something before they put them in. They didn't die after transport, mm -hmm. right? That's that's a bonus over nothing, yeah. right? <laughs> True. Uh, then there's these proactively medicated, it could be copper, it could be a whole slew of different things you could do, right. Prozzi Pro, for yep. the flu, it could be all the different things. And really, uh, the reason it's gonna be more expensive is because they had to hold it that way for three, four weeks to really get rid of anything that could be on it. They probably had losses along the way, mm -hmm. which means the cost of every healthy fish just went up. Right. Uh, and so, and rightly so, man. I mean, they put a lot of effort into making sure they got you got a healthy pet. Like, there's some there's I mean, some overhead to doing all that. Work. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, it's going to cost more than the guy that just told you you a sick fish. Absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah. Like, you know, if you go to the, 
in a local big box store, you can definitely get the cheapest fish possible. Right? Good. Yeah, and, and I've actually done that before. I did too. Uh, Fang and Sir Tromsalot came from there. The cheapest yeah. ones possible. Yeah. So, uh, you know, like we're not all, uh, uh, like we're a product of our experiences. So you share them, man. And, you know, Fang and Sir Tromsalot lived a long Last time. Last of the, I mean, one still Bit alive. Babies. We're talking nine, nine ten years. Mm -hmm. Had a bunch of babies. Yeah. yeah. Also have gone other ways as well. Uh, okay, so the next one would be what I would call... Well, what about the online QT? Oh, the online QT. I got to tell you, this one... Is this one, like Elliot's Realm? There's two versions of it. It's, it again, it's just like, uh, you know, like online shop, says it QTs. Right. Usually doesn't say what it means at all. Big, big question mark in my Could, mind. Yeah. Right? Unless they're 100% unless they're transparent about yeah. what they do. Okay, and if they held these fish, absorbed all those losses, used all those medications, and it doesn't cost a dollar more than the other one. You know it's not much of a cute I'm not saying they didn't do it. Right. I'm just saying, man, how? <laughs> for the same for the same price as the the other yeah, guy yeah. must be just robbing you then I, I, I don't know you know so uh, it makes it puts a big question in Mike so like again you have to trust the place but this is where the people like uh, Elliot and some other people like him from marine collectors come mm -hmm. in you know so Elliot you know, is specializing in fairly expensive fish yes. so he's gonna go through the whole thing. QT in this case means actually sourcing the fish healthy mm -hmm. as possible. It also means, uh, uh, you know, getting the right medications and treat them the right way. And, and like every one of these fish has a, a different kind of protocol. Yeah, now, I won't yeah. say that like as a as a home a person does it at home that wouldn't really apply that knowledge. But when you've done this for a million times for different fish from different areas. You would definitely uh, you have start a to pick up on what fish work best with different medications, different doses. Which ones don't tolerate the yeah, size of it? Exactly. So, like I know, for instance, he he uh, got me my three yellow Hawaiian anthias, and at, I, I keep meaning to show a video of them because mm. they have like uh, these like uh, really cool like purple mohawks on them. And oh, these, yeah. these fish are not cheap. And I think he has like just a couple of them left, by the way, if anybody yeah. wants one. But <laughs> like there are these really cool purple mohawks, but they came so small that I know that he didn't do like as much aggressive uh, medications on them because it would have harmed them. Yeah. So you yeah, gotta like, so kind of adjust so the whole thing. Mm. Now they're probably bigger because they've been around for months, but uh, maybe go through the whole process. Mm. But you gotta really adjust the whole thing. So, uh, you know, there's other shops. I bet you some of the other people uh, in the comments can share some other online shops that will like... Uh, have gone through that entire procedure. Uh, especially the individuals that do that kind of like, you know... Curated. Curated, personalized mm. experience. You tell them, and they'll help you understand the fishes that, like, do good in your with other fish you have in your tank and, like, help grow the whole process for you. Yeah. yeah I don't know. Really yeah. cool. All right. So the next thing is a Medicaid or observation QT at home. So put up a tank, I've done throw this. a little brick in it, and watch mm -hmm. it, make sure it doesn't die mm -hmm. before you put it in the tank. This, uh, I, uh, this was my first foray into QT personally where... Um, uh, you know, I had a few tanks under my belt. I've been, had some experience with loss and, you know, diseases and things like that. I wasn't ready to take the step into the full medication and all this other things, but uh, I was ready to not, I knew that just randomly putting fish haphazardly in my tank wasn't the best approach, but I got a 55 gallon on Craigslist for super cheap, almost free. Uh, I soaked a sponge filter or a sponge for the sponge filter in my, t in my display tank for months you know, pulled it out, ran the sponge filter, had the thing set up, filled it up with salt water, and I just watched the thing. Mm -hmm. I, I, I perp uh, this is one that I purposely, like that it was an orange, orange shoulder tank, I purposely bought from the store that wasn't doing so well. So I was like, I'm gonna give this a try, I'm gonna give this fish a try, because his chances of survival here are probably less than if I took him home. Mm -hmm. uh, and I threw him in and just watched and fed, and watched and fed, and water changed. I didn't do any type of medication, and eventually turned around. Hmm. But the observation is is just, can I get him to eat, and will he show signs of some nasty disease? So part of that is also, like, a lot of times, is, you know, the fish will just cure itself. Uh, cure is a strong word, but, like, it will recover visibly. Recover, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and especially if it's in an environment where there's low stress. Low stress. All right. Oh. Like, nature is mean. 
Like, <laughs> it, it will pick on weak things. Kick you when you're down? Yeah, it will <laughs> kick you when it's down. Oh, you're, you're stressed? Down. Here, have some disease, yeah, too. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So, like, when you're stressed and you got this disease and you put them in the tank, the other fish will recognize it oh, and, they, and they will bully the hell out of you. Uh, I, that happens a lot in like, I've seen wolf, you know, I've seen documentaries on wolf packs and different mm. types of, you know, pack animals that once somebody is injured or once one of the animals are injured, everybody attacks to uh, climb that next hierarchy ladder. It was actually interesting. I was trying to show a video of this uh, Popeye that my cherry anthea has at home to, to mm. Elliot and it looks terrible, uh, but, uh, it's hard to get a photo of because, or a video of, because he won't show you that side. Ah. And uh, Elliot was telling me, he's like, yeah, that's natural behavior because they don't want to show the, the injur injury yeah. or weakness be out of fear that other organisms will exploit it. Mm. And I'm like, God, I don't know, man. Cool. I don't know, you learn something new every day. That's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, so you can do this observation thing. Here's the reality is, is though, the only time you're gonna really catch something now, whether or not it has ick or velvet or anything, is when it's overwhelming its immune system or ability to fight it off, uh, right? Yeah. And only the things that you're trained to be able to see and better, like for your mom, like I can't believe I'm still picking on your mom, <laughs> but like if she had put it in this tank, you know, it may have died. Yeah. Which is better than put it in the tank with everything else with everything and kill else. everything else. Yeah, that's true. Right? So. Like, one of the things you should pick up on here is, like, a lot of times, I call this QT shaming all the time, because what happens is, like, if you do this anything less than perfect, five people will chime in and say, that's garbage, ah, you, you should do it better than that, you know, yeah, like, you I'm so better. much better than you, I can't believe it, you, you should take fish. the time, you know, yeah. Uh, like, yeah, but the person that actually has the observation QT tank at, at home, minimum? is probably doing this better than half of the nation. Maybe more, actually. <laughs> Could be. Could be 70, 80% yeah. of the nation. Man, bravo! You took, like, what, you took to, a step. Like, it's time to actually support that person and say, man, you're doing this better than everybody else, and you're helping the hobby mm. progress, and you're taking care of your pets and your animals, bravo. It's not time to shame that are doing it good enough. <laughs> That's terrible. All right, so the next one is medicated QT at home. This yeah. is that answer of uh, proactive or reactive. You know, so medicated meaning like, I'm just gonna assume it was expo exposed to uh, flukes and uh, ick and velvet and brook and all the other things, hmm. and I'm gonna treat for it right now. Yeah, it's uh, hard to do successfully. I mean, for me personally, I, I know, uh, I, personally I know about copper, and hmm. I could smartly, I. I could say if I went home and set up a, you know, and set up my own QT tank, medication QT tank, I could smartly test and dose and maintain copper levels. Um, I could also use pre, you know prophylactic type treatments and some prosipros, uh, understanding that I've done it bad before where the oxygen levels just plummeted and I lost fish. Um, but you know, there's a whole slew of medications out there that I don't know how to use, uh, and I can't say that I could do it successfully, but it, I'm taking a step, I'm taking the next step. I don't have the full medicine cabinet of uh, everything that you could ever get, uh, but I've knocked two of the biggest, most popular ones, uh, you know, diseases out there like ick, mm -hmm. for sure. And that puts me even higher percentage of success. All right, there's also an 80-20 to this, man. Yeah. Like there's just a couple of treatments you could do to solve 80% of the problems that people run into. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. And so, uh, you know, treat for the uh, ick and velvet alone, a major, major advancement <laughs> in how the, or decrease in the likelihood you're gonna run into issues. Yes. So, uh, and the Prozzi Pro as well. So, uh, like, yeah, there's, I don't know, man, proactive, reactive, it, You, I think the right answer here is actually, so I have the same problem. The, like, the first time that I tried to do a quarantine, mm -hmm. I killed everything in there, Yeah. right? And so yeah. I had, I was trying to do some engineer gobies, yeah. right? And then they all broke out with uh, what I think it was a uh, brook, mm -hmm. even though brook's more clown, clown with clownfish, it covered them in this weird like slime, yeah. you know, and it killed yeah, them really like rapidly. A, uh, thick mucusy yeah. type. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yep. so. Uh, I, don't, I don't know for sure what it was because uh, it was a million years ago, but uh, it was the one time that like I really tried this and then I failed at it, you know. And then actually when I had some brook with the clownfish, I tried the formula, formalin and all mm -hmm. this stuff. 
And here was, here was the problem, man, is the like, type of information that I got was so hard to know what to do. You need to know what to do beforehand is oh, the, the, the thing. Yeah. Because immediately I, I'm looking at these clownfish. They have that like a slimy coat on them and they're like gasping for air. Mm. I do the freshwater dip and then it works for a while, but they come back back. I read that formalin is the only real solution. They go to my fish store. Nobody has formalin. The, for, the fish store tells me formalin is actually garbage. Huh. This, this store wasn't good. Uh, <laughs> this is an example of a good store. Uh, they're gone. Uh, but like he literally told me that you shouldn't listen to that online garbage. Mm. Uh, the people on the forums are wrong. You know, like, ah, oh, man, like, you're not helping me, then man. what's the solution? Because uh, I'm actually pretty confident <laughs> in this formalin thing. Yeah. <laughs> but I've never yeah. done it. Uh, actually, I think I got the formula in from like a, a, a Reef Club member, uh, but I tried it and I wasn't successful. Now, here's the thing. As part of the problem, like actually one of the biggest problems with all, all of reefing is... Acquisition. I go knowledge. out to find that knowledge yeah. and I, re I have to read like 60 different ways to do something. Figure out which ones are... I really, which one's possible, which one's inside my skill set, and which one of these is actually going to work. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, and, and the moment that I need it. <laughs> I, like I need it right now, not like three months worth of research to figure it out myself. Yeah, yeah. and so oh, the, timeline here. the likelihood of that having a successful outcome is really low. Yeah. I'll give you the opposite though. The first time my auto top off failed and dumped 10 gallons of uh, Kelkwasser mm. into my 90 gallon tank, which is bad news, you Went by to the, the way. computer. Yeah, went to the computer and I typed in like whatever sentence I typed in and it immediately said, go dump vinegar into the tank. It does not matter about uh, the swing or instability. It me the thing that matters right now is you have a pH of 12 and you need to fix that immediately. <laughs> and the only thing I lost was some crab, snails, and xenia. All the corals uh, other than that lived and yeah. sadly the xenia made it back. Yeah. Uh, I was actually really happy about but, the xenia. But when it comes to fish <laughs> disease, we need a resource like that. That's yeah, but there's so many opinions. Like the Kalkwasser one was actually really, we've all settled on the answer. And some people said use soda water and said, yeah. but whatever. Like the answers were largely the same. So I think what we need is actually that resource that says, you know what, forget all the best practices, forget all the anomalies, forget all the other stuff. This is a high percentage way to deal with it. 20 Yep. That's all we 80, need. 20 That's all we need. High percentage way to do it. Do this exact thing. These tools are readily available and you'll probably have the highest chances of success. <laughs> Doesn't mean 80% that you'll be to Brooke when you notify, see it because a no. lot of times it's too late. Yes. But it means that with the knowledge that you have right now of all the things out there, this has the highest chance of success for the average person. I'm willing to try it. Same thing with the quarantine, right? Mm -hmm. And so if I want to go look at, uh, about quarantine, if all of you out there that say you've quarantined before, how long did it take you to find and perfect the solution that you've done before? Mm -hmm. Who did you believe and how did you, uh, you know, go about doing it? What if you just got somebody you know, that said, again, these are the three things that matter the most. Do it in this size tank. Do it with this type of filtration. Do it X, Y, Z. Here's the recipe. Follow it. 80-20. 80% of the success. 20% of the effort. Yeah. Now, man, I'll do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm in. Okay. Uh, and the, the part of it that, like, what happens is I was actually there. Mm. And then everybody QT shamed me and told me about the 20% that I was missing. And I got lost in all the data. And I no longer want to do it anymore. <laughs> right? And the nature of it is actually the person that is trying to help you do the finish the other 20% is missing the fact that you actually need that like kind of the experience under your belt. That person didn't get all the way to the end game in the first try right, either. Right, right. Like so I just need to get that that, that like experience on the belt and do it reasonably well. And Start after I've done it reasonably well, I'll instinctively want to do it better. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, uh, so well, Hopefully we can come up with that one. All right, so now I've medicated all my fish. This is actually only number six, man. We're going to number 10. Yeah. Uh, uh, in terms of scale of how good you can quarantine your fish. This kind of um, this kind of speaks to that reactive portion of the medicated QT at home in that, uh, so you've done all the work. You, you have the fish in the tank uh, and then something happens. Something slips through the cracks. 
you, maybe you didn't QT your corals or your inverts and something got in the tank, uh, but you did everything else. Now it's hospital tank time. Mm -hmm. And the array of medications and everything that you would need to treat whatever came up from in the, in the tank. Obviously mm -hmm. something that you can't do inside the tank for most cases, uh, you'd have to remove them. So this is the hospital tank and the treating disease is actually a really big step up from just quarantining your fish. Yes. Because if you quarantine, a medicated quarantine, it's follow this like little protocol here yeah. and it will Again, achieve here's those, reasonably success. Yeah, here's those top 80%, here's how you fix it, and now you ob observe, if everything looks good, put them in the tank. I'm not even bothering trying to identify whether it has it or not. Yeah. I'm just assuming it does. All right, now medicated means, uh, in hospital tank means, I have spotted it, not only spotted it, correctly identified what it was, mm. and I did it in time to be able to do something about it, and I have the medication have on hand. all of those medications on hand, because none of this stuff is sold at a lot of fish stores, like formalin and stuff. Yeah. Uh, a lot of these things just aren't really available. They weren't, at least not in Minneapolis here. And so, like, I need to actually have them. If I don't, the, the, even if I overnight it, it's probably too late. It might be too late. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And so, yeah, I don't know. The, the hospital piece, you have now, like, really transitioned to becoming, you know, a fish tank veterinarian. Oh, yeah. You know, like... You could have a medicine cabinet full You are identifying and treating using medications the, your pets and animals that you care for. You have become your aquarium's veterinarian because nobody else is willing uh, to. You can't go to you can't go to your local vet down the street to, for you where you take your cat and dog, and uh, it, I mean, it would be hard pressed to find a vet, a normal vet, uh, that has all of the knowledge on all of these fish diseases, cures, uh, treatments, dosages. Uh, timelines, the whole nine. Uh, we are almost the experts in that realm. Unless you have my uh, my vet, Dr. Ryan. He has a big reef tank. He actually has a YouTube channel. Oh, really? Well. Uh, so, <laughs> knows all about yeah, it. Yeah, they've got him, and then he's in. Uh, okay, so if you got a hospital tank, that's the next step up, right? Okay, but now the skill set's getting up. But now this tr transition from skill set to giant pain in the ass. Peter. Like, this is definitely <laughs> it, right? Okay, now you didn't just do that first batch but every last fish that enters the tank needs to go through that, man. You can't skip one. No, nope. nope. just because they look so good doesn't doing, mean you can't skip it. You're doing proper quarantine now. Like mm, we're shooting for perfection. Elliot level. Uh, yeah, like I'm, I, this is the eradication. So this yep. is the like, I can for sure tell you that there are like no, uh, uh, and there's no ick or velvet in my tank. And by for sure, yes, they're always the 0 0.0001. I'll uh, we'll leave that out of the conversation. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you with every reasonable degree of certainty that I've eradicated the chances that it can here. That definitely means I can't do four fish and not the other three. No. Right? No, you I mean you get, uh, finally your prized fish becomes available because you've been waiting for months and months and months, uh, maybe even years. And once you get your hands on that fish, it is not a, an observe, it's not a dump and pray, it's not, you know, just uh, medicate for the regular stuff. You, ha you have to put these same fish through the same uh, process that you did all of your other fish, otherwise you're just jeopardizing the entire thing. Yep, it's true. Uh, Here's the thing, is if you did it for the first three fish, why can't you do it for the other three? So this one isn't as big of a deal. Once you right. get that skill set in your belt, and it's, uh, it's good to practice. The next one, now number eight, you're really mm. getting good at this. Now you're like the, the, you're becoming the QT guru we all look up to. Every last snail, crab, shrimp, cucumber, every invert, any a starfish, yeah. anything that is going to go in the tank lives in a fishless system in your house for 73 days or something like 73, that. 73, 76, yeah. somewhere in there. Yeah. Do you have the time, patience, uh, capability of doing something like that because if you don't you the possibility of these things bringing in and harboring vectors or they're like vec, you know harboring in these diseases uh you could just wipe out all the work that you did beforehand to your fish okay so it's i may true. i may have put all that effort in and then i oh i need some snails and i dump some snails in there well you just set yourself down. i think it's like the trophins or whatever part of the ick that settles out could be on the shell could be mm -hmm. in the water that you mm -hmm. put it in the droplet or whatever it is so here's the piece man uh, and this is the piece like 
you'll say, people will say this out loud, like, yep, if you've quarantined, you didn't quarantine your fish unless you properly did a 73 or 76 day uh, fishless quarantine. They put them in a totally different system. And the reason you, get, you can't medicate the same way no. uh, with uh, inverts. So I'm gonna run that system in my house for 70 some days and I'm gonna get it set up. I'm gonna buy five snails today. So I'm gonna go set up another system and run it fishless uh, to make sure the snails don't have that before I go in the system. So now let's just be honest. How many of you are out there, and you can raise your hand or not that you do that. I, and if you do that, take great pride Pat yourself on the you're, back, man, and like, say, man, you are doing the best. You're an inspiration to us all. Top five, maybe top 3%. Okay, I actually want to answer that question, right? Yeah. People out there watching this, zero to 100%, how many people do you think quarantine in a fishless system every last snail, shrimp, crab, cucumber, starfish, anything that enters the tank, any invert, how many people do you think quarantine them? And by the way, if 30 days in, you add one more snail, start, a start all over, again. go to back to the thing. <laughs> sub 1%, sub one in 100. Well that. under 1%. Yeah. I don't know if I'd ever, I don't know if it's in me to even attempt to do that. Uh, I, I, okay, I, can't. I get better at this every year. I've been doing it for like 17 years. I feel like I'm 10 years away from doing that. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know, man. I like, yes, it, and then like, uh, you and I are supposed to like lead the charge as the best, but we're How also to, human beings yeah. and realistic. Yeah. Like, I, I, let's be real uh, about this piece because we're gonna about to get, if you don't do the next thing, this thing was worthless too. Yes. Right? So the next thing, number nine is- Same, uh, same. Corals. Every last coral. 70 some days in a fishless isolated system. And remember, if you had one snail in the middle or one other core in the middle, reset the clock back to 70 some days. Yeah, so the skeletal uh, structure of those LPS, SPS, and anything with frag plugs has the same you know, ability to harbor some of those pests. Uh, specifically LPS corals, probably oh, the hiding highest. Hiding in those crevices. And, yeah, like yeah. a... SPS coral is a lot easier to avoid a lot of pests because you can clip of the, off the nubbin. And a lot of the flesh, yeah, yeah. it's not gonna hide, harbor in the flesh. Yeah, so I can clip off the base, throw that in the trash, maybe put that in some frag tank, I don't know, but mm. I can clip it off and now without the base, the likelihood uh, goes way, way down. Could it be in the droplet of water? Yes, mm. and, you know, like, but it goes down significantly. But when you have those big, huge LPS bases, uh, the chances the of pests go hammers. way, way, way up. Yeah, all of those. Yeah. All right, so Ooh. now, all right, you know what? Now we're into the sub 1%. I believe this wholeheartedly. Super if, sub 1%. If anybody here thinks that's more than 1% is doing it, chime up, because I want to hear it. <laughs> All right, so now I have medicated all the corals, uh, or the fish in here, pro proactively medicated all the yep. fish. I have uh, every last snail crab invert, I have done 67 days. Every coral, 67 days. And the fish is actually easy because at one point you're just gonna run out of fish. I'm gonna stop putting fish in this tank. Oh yeah, I'm Coral done. though, and snails and crabs for the most part Harder too. Harder to do. But coral, man, I'm gonna probably add. I'm a collector. Until the tank comes down. I'm gonna keep <laughs> adding coral to this thing. So, Every single time, and I have to have this thing running. Okay, now, if you're that person, but also, number 10, mm. the fishless system has to be at least 10 feet away from your other system, right? Yeah. Otherwise, the, the it can actually aerosolize and end up in the air and end up in the tank, which means not even just 10 feet, but it also has to be, if it's further than that, hopefully there's no airflow. So it could be like 20 feet if there's a fan going that way, <laughs> or if it's near a vent, or if one day in the next 10 years, mm. you dip your hand in that tank, oh, I'm going and then the other one, or dip your hand in the water chain system and cross-contaminate <sighs> is all done. All done. Now, that is pretty extreme. And mm. what is the extreme likelihood that something like that would happen? Low, uh, very low. Mm -hmm. Like, would it, how many tanks have people gone to the point where they are at the uh, quarantine in the corals, quarantine in the snails, or even not even quarantine in the corals, not even quarantine in the snails, the inverts and what have you, and have been just fine. Probably a high uh, high percentage of people have uh, been fine, but you don't know. And 
there is always the chance. Especially, I mean, if you think about the um, the amount of investment that you that you put into like your fish and your tank. Are you willing to take that one chance? Okay, so here here's the thing, man. Every conversation is almost like if you 80 20 every conversation, yeah. 40% total garbage, number one, don't need to do it. <laughs> Other 40%, total garbage unless you do it all the way. Perfectly. Right yeah. answer, usually in the middle. Always. Because right. like I mean you're not gonna protect ever against every glass of water, the, the drop of water, aerosolize, every last coral. I mean it's total crazy yeah, town. That's that's uh, a bit much. Yeah, I mean this is in the lab, man. I'm just trying to take the care of the pets as the best I can This isn't a fun hobby anymore, like, it's a work. Yeah, like I don't treat my cat and dog that way. You know, like I'm not like you know, isolating them from, <laughs> you know, outside. No. I don't ever want you to ever see another dog at the dog park, man. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, like, yeah, don't I Don't smell that bush, don't lick that thing, don't do any of that. No, I'm not doing that either, man. Yeah. And then there's some analogies there that don't cross over 100%, but still, man, like, we just do the best we can. Oh, yeah. I feed them the best I can, you know, I do the things I can, and then I have to leave the rest. And then 80% of the time, we're successful. All right, so in that spirit, this is just my own personal belief. I don't mm. know if Randy shares this one or not, but uh, uh, this is the middle ground. And like anywhere you find in here, any of these steps that you do that like you could choose to do or not to do makes it better than you were doing it before. Yes. You should take great pride in it. And no, man, you're doing the best you can. Uh, mm. And it doesn't, if you miss the last drop of water, man, Eh. It doesn't make you a bad person. No, no. Right? Okay. So, all right. So, a realistic don't, option. Dump and pray mate doesn't make you a bad person either, but you could be better. No. I mean, here's the piece. It, it's like, dump and pray is the piece of that is a, the ignorance is bliss, but once you know better. Yeah. A lot of beginner reefers like, fall in that dump and pray. Now ask them to feed them first, at least. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. You know, Watch them for, you're gonna bring this home and like try to take mm. care of it for 10 minutes or 10 out, 10 years. Take 10 minutes to watch it, yeah. you know, first. You know, <laughs> like, there's something you could do along the way. So for me, uh, I would, uh, I think a realistic option, and we're gonna start training you, I've been promised for, uh, promises forever, but it's actually gonna materialize. Uh, Jen, who runs a uh, local fish store and is now part of the BRS team, yep. uh, she's gonna help us really share the right quarantine method. Mm -hmm. uh, the, and for 80% of the people. Yeah, like let's get the 80-20 out there. Those three, four things that you should do if you want be more successful. Yeah, and so we're gonna get that to you, but uh, it, a medicated QT on all fish, right? Like, it isn't that hard. Get a 20 gallon, uh, mm -hmm. a 29 gallon tank, mm -hmm. five little things, throw some bio balls in your sump so you can throw them in there anytime that you need it. Yep. And like, it can, let's make it really simple in a way that anybody could mm. do this. Follow step one through 10 and yep. you're done and it's really, really easy. Mm. So if it's that easy, you should do it. All right, if you have the space, time, budget, corals, and inverts too, but man, I don't think that's realistic for most people. Yeah, I don't, so I don't know. Go ahead and do it if you can, uh, but you don't have to. And still, you can still take great pride in that you uh, did it yeah, at uh, least medicated way. your fish. And, and actually, I'm gonna tell you that this is what I just did because I was confronted with this. You know, I had- Oh, the, you had all those corals. Yeah, mm. I had uh, Elliot, you know, he's quarantined all my fish, selected uh, say, uh, uh, safe ones, mm -hmm. uh, are healthy ones and then so there's you know, a high price on your fish in your tank yep so okay what do you do when you get corals i gotta tell you i thought about it and i'm also thinking about you guys like what are they going to say if i don't do if this? you don't do it yeah because i know that i'm supposed to be shame like, you. Uh, the, like you get qt yeah. shamed i'm also you know what i'm just going to own i'm human too you're the mentor yeah i'm all, I mean, <laughs> like i gotta tell you dude there is no chance that i'm going to set up another tank in the house I can't put it in the fish room because no. it has to be 10 feet away. I yeah. don't have room for it anywhere else. Three I, kids yeah. running around. I, I don't, dude, no. No. I, I don't have time for it. Like Set up another tank here, but then that adds another tank to Josh's maintenance rhythm and everybody else. So now you no. put the burden on somebody else. Yeah, no, man. I, yeah. I'd only do it at my own house yeah. myself. I was going to do it. Yeah. So I'd have to go set up this tank, follow all, all this process, make sure that I got set two months before every coral I buy. And I got it. To fill up a 360 gallon tank, man, I got a lot of coral coming, <laughs> man. Like, I've already added so many. I, yep. how, dude, how could you possibly do that? Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I don't know. So, the people that are like, I do it, dude, 
You Bravo. are. Bravo. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I want to send you an award. Uh, you, you are <laughs> definitely worthy. Student has become the master. Yes, I agree. <laughs> I, I, so I, I'm not going to do that. I, I didn't do it with the snails. But you know what? I did do some other things. Yeah. So I started off make, by making sure that the fish are generally healthy. And I'm taking some calculated risks afterward. Mm -hmm. uh, but after that, I'm also not just assuming dump and pray and hoping everything is going to be better. I'm actually doing you know, what I learned from reading Humblefish's articles about that conversation of eradication mm -hmm. versus management. Uh, management, right? So now I need to just kind of manage the fact that there the, might be the something in it. Yeah. I don't know. And actually, I do send out those DNA tests. So it'll be actually super interesting because I'm going to send one out real quick here. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're going to do that DNA test thing uh, uh, with Colby and because I, I got my second one back. I yeah. haven't talked to you about it yet, oh, actually. No, I haven't. So we'll share that. And we're going to send out another one now, which after is like post sand. At, yeah, after that, the sand, and post coral. Post coral. Yeah. It will tell us if ick DNA is in there, and then mm. yeah, I get to wear my shame all over uh, if it is. It'll also I, tell us uh, if the coral brought in a lot of diversity, if the yep. new sand brought in a lot of diversity. Mm. Mm. I can't wait to tell. That's exciting. Uh, I don't know. We learn every day. All right. So, but what I am going to do is take care of my fish with a expectation that I didn't put something super sick that was going to overwhelm the whole tank in there and that I selected healthy pets to begin with or at least Elliot mm -hmm. did for me mm -hmm. uh, and that now I got the UV in there mm -hmm. right Part and so of management I'm gonna give it 30 seconds 32 seconds here we go on how the UV works the reason that UV works is because the most of these disease have some kind of cycle where they fall off the fish and they go into the water at which point they can sterilize them and prevent them from replicating. They are in the water column. Yep. And then a lot of them will settle out into the sand uh, or nothing. substrate yeah. and re replicate into many, many more of themselves and go back into the water column, UV. in which case the UV will sterilize it and prevent it from re replicating. Now, that one will actually go and attach to the fish. But when it falls off, it won't be able to replicate in the sand next time. So what we're doing with the UV isn't eradicating every last one mm. of them from the water. What we're doing is managing the population. The bigger, the badder the UV implementation, the fewer, uh, the lower the population will be yeah. in your tank. Not eradication yeah. whatsoever. But so yeah, and that's why that works is it isn't that, like when you look at most tanks that haven't gone through any type of QT, you probably have ick in the tank. You just don't know it because the parasites haven't populated to the mm. point that they're visible. The UV will also protect against that. And what You're the UV does is protects against the inevitable stressors. Yes. The power outages, the flow outages. The triggers. You know, like the, the kelk you know, overdose, yeah, yeah. you know, whatever it might be. Now when that happens and the fish's immune system goes down where it's more susceptible, more susceptible means that it's going to become like a food source for the population growth, <laughs> it will actually stop that population growth. So UV, attention to diet. Well fed. And not just well fed, but, but what do these things eat? Nutritionally, uh, you know, a very uh, varied nutritional diet. So you're supplying them with all, not just brine or not just brine or mice and shrimp, but that's all they get. They mm -hmm. get fats. They get proteins. They get you know your tangs get you know algae and mm -hmm. you know plant life material. And there's all kinds of small particulate foods. There's just a varied diet. So. So uh, my white-tailed tang uh, got to actually, when there was like the prolonged like six-month cycle or wherever it was with my tang, mm. it, it got those like white pockets under its eyes from malnutrition during that period of time yeah. because there was no algae growing, there's no lights on, right? And there was some kind of weird slime that he was eating off of and stuff. But as soon as the lights got turned back on and I started feeding those algae pellets and stuff, all of a sudden it just goes away. Mm. Diet, man, diet. And like, Every organism has a preferred diet that it's like evolved to. Uh, and you can just watch their natural behavior. Like you watch the tanks eat algae all day long. Uh, you know, give them that. Snorkeling. Yeah, give them that. That's what they eat. Uh, you watch them eat, you know, plankton, tiny little things. You know, it isn't brine shrimp. Man. Yeah. 
You know, it isn't pellets per se. You know, so vary the diet. You know, frozen foods tend to do really well. Pellets, uh, when like for me, I like the LG pellets just because I I don't like the nori. I don't like the big ugly nori and mm -hmm. dropping rocks big of it in of there it and put my off. hand in the whole yeah, thing. Yeah. And so I've had really good luck just feeding the LG, LG extreme yep. pellets mm -hmm. from from Hakari instead, and I've got the same result out of mm -hmm. feeding the herbivores that way. Mm. Uh, also. Stress and husbandry. So in the tank, man, I put great effort to build like acclimation boxes mm. and stuff like this in the tank. I'm choosing fish that aren't going to chase the hell out of each other. You're, and, you're also choosing like uh, equipment and gear that will keep you on top of uh, mm. stressful events like failed equipment and stuff. So your your monitors, your apexes, your oh. all of the alerts and alarms and everything that are added on there are part of developing a less to stress free environment. I will know the moment that heater fails and be able to solve it. Yeah. It will not create Unlike here alarm. when we lost the, you know, when the temperature dropped and yep. nobody noticed until he got in, that could have been hours. God, like everything will blow up. I got a horn that will go off in my house. So it's, <laughs> it's not just the apex will set off an alarm in my phone or whatever. There's an audible horn in the basement when it goes, to, if it goes too high on anything or too low. Yeah. Like, so it will wake me up. Ryan, come do something about this. It matters <laughs> your pet's lives are at risk. You don't want to wake up this way. Yeah. Right? Reducing the stress. Yeah. And so uh, in that case, so like all that technology there, especially the monitoring piece, not necessarily all the automation. Mm -hmm. I do use some of the automation as well. But really the monitoring piece, the alarms that tell me to go do something about it so I can physically, as a person, you know, just helps me stay in tune with it. Yeah. Uh, I can go actually do it. So even things like if the kelp are overdosed again, well, I, I can probably decrease the pH so fast that it'll be a stressful event, but not the, the same thing as making the fish live in a pH of 12 for the next six hours. Yeah, you until know? you figure it out. Yeah, yeah so the, the peak, man, yes, but not, not as bad, Yeah. right? Yep. All right, so manage uh, stress and husbandry. Don't get fish to chase each other. Make sure there's a adequate ha habitat. That's actually another thing I did when I recognized that the, uh, oh, yeah. uh, the arasses like to live in these little holes, you know, in the substrate. You had zero of them. Yeah, their natural habitat isn't sand. It's this like kind of like sheet of reef that has all these holes. Rubble in it. rock everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And there's like a, I think there's an episode on my Facebook you yep. can go see it. But like we just took a bunch of rubble, broke it all up, and then glued it back together to make again these habitats. to make these little flat habitats where now the fish go in. And sure enough, as soon as they put it in there, that's where the wrasse wants to live. Smart. Yeah, because that's where <laughs> they live. Makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> I, instead of forcing them to live somewhere where he wouldn't normally, and you watch them darting it out of it yeah. now, just like they did uh, in the video you've that Elliot sent us. Taking the habitat stress away. Yeah, I don't know, very cool. Mm. Uh, all right, so mm -hmm. no ick magnets. Avoiding the ick magnets. This one's actually really, really poignant, right? So. I really like Achilles tank. I love all of the ick magnets. The powder blues, the powder mm -hmm. browns, the Achilles. I want them all, um, but okay. they are well known for that. Yeah, they're well known, and, and like Elliot won't give me one. Uh, <laughs> it, it won't do it, right? And like rightly so. Yeah. I mean, he would eh, if I really begged him. But this is what he would say: is like, dude, no matter what we do, no matter what I do here, what you do at home. You know, this is like some grade of professional to hobbyist grade mm. uh, QT. Something can always make it through. It's just real. Yeah. Right? This isn't a lab environment, man. And if it was, the fish would cost three grand. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, and even if you do it perfect, are you prepared to run every last coral that goes in this tank through a 70-some-day uh, fishless cycle in a tank? Mm. Because then, man, maybe, right? Uh, then, if you're, if you're gonna, every snail, crab, coral, everything, all right, good. But what I don't wanna do is you spend all this money on all these fish and then, you know, put this one in here, which is essentially like a little ick battery just waiting to explode on you. <laughs> you know, it's like an ick time bomb, yeah, I guess yeah, is a yeah. better way. It's just waiting for the right area where it could explode. And it's because it has this like really thin mucus coat on the Achilles and powder brown, browns and mm. blues. And why it just doesn't have the same natural ability to fight these things off. So don't put those fish in the tank at the beginning. Yep. Just skip them. No matter how bad you want the powder blue or the Achilles in a reef tank like this, just don't do it. Now, there's a flip side of this actually for me. 
I have considered now getting a fish only tank in the house, oh. right? And so in a fish only tank, the I can commit to doing the, cor the fish thing, the quarantine to the best of my ability mm -hmm. and don't worry about the snail crab, all that other garbage. Yeah, ah, that makes sense. Yeah. And then you can get all your dream fish. Yeah, I mean, by don't worry, I mean, I can get all the snails in there that I need to begin mm -hmm. with. Uh, I will quarantine them all because I don't have to also think about the, the if I didn't do the coral and the snail thing was useless. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. I can do the snail thing once, you know, and maybe periodically if, uh, you, know, they, you know, the snails die or whatever. But, like, next year, you just it's not like more. all the corals are going in. And if then, if I quarantine them all that way, I'm now comfortable having a little school of Achilles or whatnot in mm -hmm. there, you know? Yeah, so well. it's not that you can't do it. It's just... It's not in the best interest for... It's, it's especially, man, because he's talking about, like, we're talking about putting, like, all these masked angels in here. We're talking about putting, uh, like, all these, like, It's all really the other cool fish things. you're concerned with rather yeah, than like, just the Achilles. I, I, I might have twenty some thousand dollars of fish in this tank, mm. and I'm going to put them all at risk with... Because I want one... Nah. Nah, 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 never mind. So just skip the ink, ink magnets uh, and uh, like just be okay with all the rest yeah. uh, as, as part of this whole thing. Okay. And the other part, of, now the part of this here is I'm not doing it perfect. I own and I acknowledge it. Yep. Right? Human. But by making sure that the fish aren't sick to begin with, you know, uh, either quarantining yourself or, or buying, buying from some from place somebody. that you know does a, a medicated quarantine yeah. for you. Uh, feeding them adequately, thinking about their diet, think about their natural diet, thinking about not how to do it this the cheapest possible way or the way with the least nutrients, but the way that actually serves the animal healthiest and implementing the uh, UV sterilization to control the population of parasites in the tank. I know I'm doing this better than 99% uh, of reefers out there, and I'll take great pride in that, mm. right? And and then any if I can share that information, it inspires anybody else out there. Yeah. Uh, ah, even better. Everybody's just increases uh, their chances of success. All together, the big piece in this, I'm going to say this one's on us. Like, this one is on BRS. I'm I'm taking accountability for it. We are going to get you a recipe, a recipe for a the, medicated quarantine that 80 80 20 is it mm -hmm. makes it easy. Anybody could follow it. It will be inexpensive, you know, uh, in relation to the cost of the fish. I'll even commit to this. Uh, we're about to have my me and the video actors uh, quarterly meeting. Mm. I will give Jen the quarterly goal to start developing this recipe. No, released. Release. Okay, we like to make ah, them specific, is, these goals. These are smart, smart goals. Okay, quarantine video released in next quarter. That has to hit your list tomorrow. Okay. All right, so now we just made a commitment to you. Within the next quarter, you will see the quarantine protocol. The, the recipe. That is easy to follow, relatively inexpensive. Anybody could do it, and it will solve 80% of the problem. Up your game. Boom. <laughs> I, I mean, like, I like that. Okay. That was a great addition. There you right go. There, right yeah. on. Uh, I mean, so. We brought her on for a reason. She's going to she's gonna teach us all how to do it. I can't teach you because this is not my Do you got your phone out? I do. Okay. Uh, while we, uh, there's two, there's some really good oh, questions here. I just want to hit real quick. All right. So, by the way, we're going to answer these questions. But right now, uh, should we wait on the phone thing or should we answer these questions? I'm going to hit the, let's hit these questions real quick okay. and I'm going to hit post. All right. So All right. deal's coming. Uh, first things first, Battle OCR, four ninety nine. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you very much. Pops that up there every, uh, every live stream. Uh, crazy and gents, would you QT the rocks that come from your local store that you get? <laughs> yes. Yep. Everything, man. Every last drop Everything of water. Everything that, that could so have something on that, it. That, 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 uh, uh, you have to Q QT it for 70 some days in a fishless system. Yeah. Yeah, it's 72, 76. Pretty somebody easy with say. rock when you're kind of like getting your thing, you know, tank set up. Get the rock first. Do this first. And then, you know, you're piecing your stuff together. You're building your stand. You're doing all these other things. 70-some days later, it's good to go. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and I don't think you can medicate the rock because you're going to kill all the coral and algae and everything. And then it'll all get stuck in there, too, like uh, leach you, copper and stuff Yeah, you out. can't. You can't. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, why yes, you can't use copper some in your tank. Days. Uh, Big Papa Tanker says, thoughts on QT for aquacultured fish straight from the supplier? Aquacultured. 
man, you sure like to think that the aquacultured fish were never exposed to this, but I don't think if that's were, a safe answer. It, I mean, that goes back to that, you know, is every tank or holding facility they've ever been in 10 feet or more away from other, you know, tanks that maybe they weren't aquacultured captive bred fish? Because uh, in this building, it is hard to be 10 feet away from an aquarium at any given time. They're just uh, everywhere. There's also aquacultured in a lab or a or facility, out in the ocean. and there's also aquacultured in the ocean. The ocean, is, in the ocean not, for sure. is not eradicated. Yeah, and are they housed, like the, the aquaculture, did you get it from the aquaculture facility, or did you get it from a wholesaler, which in case had uh, uh, that tank within 10 feet of another tank and people putting their hands in it? I think the answer is you have yes. to quarantine them all. Treat them as if they yeah. had something. I will tell you that I think the captive bred and then medicated uh, quarantine afterward is like the holy grail of both responsible mm. uh, pet selection and then caring for them afterwards. So yeah, that sure. really goes together well. For sure. All right, boom, it's out. All right, so if you're a subscriber, you just got uh, a, a notification of uh, the live deal this week. Uh, if you're not, subscribe. But also, you can just go to uh, our channel and hit the channel page uh, community or the community tab. tab, and you will see the update of this deal. It's going to be on there. Boom. Go see it. And uh, it's hopefully, only there for 24 hours. So Hopefully, you guys like our new set, Mangrove Tanks over here. This is 900 gallon, ready to go. We'll talk more about it uh, later. Go check out our social. It's all over social. All right. See you guys. Uh, next week. See ya.